Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the Bear Mountain Nordic Ski Trails near Dawson Creek in northeastern British Columbia, Canada. The Bear Mountain Ski Hill is a very inconspicuous place for a predatory bear attack. For miles around the largest town in the area, Dawson Creek, lay cultivated farmland cut from prior forests. The elevation here is around 2,700 feet high and varies only because of the slight roll in the mostly flat terrain. To the south of town is a pretty expansive stretch of forest, and the final approach of that forest is the Bear Mountain Ski Hill. It's aptly named after it barely qualifies as a hill, with only a 300-foot drop from the top of its path to the bottom. The dense stands of quaking aspen, balsam poplar, and various fir and spruce trees to the south extend just past the ski hill and shroud it as part of the wilderness to human users. According to the pictures on the website, which I have posted a link to in a pinned comment, Bear Mountain is a great place for area residents to learn to ski and snowboard in the winter, but also a great place to wander and hike the remaining seasons of the year. Each fall, the varying stands of deciduous trees and evergreens offer hikers a brilliant palette for their photographs. Wolverine Trail is part of the Ski Hills Nordic Ski Trail system and is flatter than the downhill trails. Visiting hikers during the months without snow can walk these trails and vent their energy as well as the beautiful embrace of the trees offered to them. That is exactly what brought 30-year-old Leoset Kanoi here. The energetic and happy woman worked assisting disabled adults for her job after immigrating to Canada 15 years ago from the Philippines. She had met and married the love of her life, Gary Hansen, while serving Dawson Creek's community. Hansen admired his wife for her appreciation of the outdoors, stating that she frequently went camping and hiking and enjoyed photographing the Canadian wilderness and scenic landscapes. 48-year-old Annalyn Shirtliff Bartolome had brought along her niece Wanali, as well as her teenage son Kelly. The four nature lovers ventured out together on the evening of October 3rd, 2022, hoping to get pictures of the fall leaves as the evening sun set across the forests. But this day, the fall changes brought a more desperate visitation than they had bargained for. Just as the dark began to set in a little after 7 p.m., the four family and friends were returning to their vehicles after enjoying their hike and pictures together. Leah set, Annalyn, and Wena Lee walked side by side, and Kelly meandered slightly behind, still glancing at the colors and trees, making his reluctant retreat. As Kelly walked and thought, he heard a strange thumping on the ground behind the group, as if a large man was stomping toward them. He quickly turned and could see a large black bear in full gallop, closing in on the four hikers. Kelly yelled out, Bear! Run! Run! A little information about predatory behavior is in order to understand what exactly was going on at this time. Predators across the board, from sharks to tigers, will approach their prey whenever eyes are not on them. Sometimes they sneak up stealthily, and other times they storm in quickly. The two different approaches serve two different purposes. When a predator is sneaking up on a solitary prey animal, a subdued approach is frequently utilized to avoid inducing a panicked escape by the prey animal. When there are several prey animals, a quick and aggressive charge by the predator can be used to scatter the prey into a vulnerable and chaotic retreat. As prey animals retreat, they frequently direct their vision and consequently their defensive tools, like their mouths and claws or antlers, away from a pursuing predator, making a safer ambush for them possible. Converging suddenly on the hikers had exactly the intended reaction, as the group immediately fled in panic. Now before you start chiding the hikers about running, consider a few things. They were not expecting to see a black bear or likely any animal, while they hiked. They hadn't brought bear spray, an air horn, nor a firearm, as proof of their expectations. They had numbers, 
and were hiking in an area frequented by people and located only a few hundred feet from the paved Loiselle subdivision road. This isn't a remote hiking trip in an area where bear activity is regularly reported. As the group fled, the elder of the group, Anna Lynn, stumbled as the others made their escape. As she pulled herself back to her feet, the black bear bit onto her head and wrestled her to the ground by tossing its head back and forth. Though she screamed and grabbed at the bear's muzzle, she was no match for its power and aggression. Leah Zett was in full sprint by the time she heard Annalyn's cries for help. She stopped and began trotting back toward her friend, lost in the conundrum of what to do to save her. Leah Zett heard Annalyn uttering something in Tagalog. I love you, my son. Tell your sister I love her. Tell our families in the Philippines I love them. Hearing her friend's resignation to her fate was enough to move Leah Set to do something very few people would even consider. Having no weapon with her, Leah Set armed herself with a large stick and proceeded toward the bear. She jammed the end of the stick into the bear's mouth, trying to pry Annalyn's head from its teeth. Leah Set pried and pushed on the stick, but wasn't convincing the bear to release its hold on Annalyn before Kelly found his inner warrior. Somehow Kelly had stopped running, and in his youthful mind, abandoned all concern for his own safety. He sprinted back toward his mother, as she was in the bear's jaws. He grabbed a stick and splintered it over the bear's head. Kelly attacked the bear with his fists, while Leah Set kicked it. They were administering a black bear bead down, until the black bear beat back. As Kelly boxed the bear, it turned and swatted him across his chest, sending him flying and onto his back several feet away. Leah Set was still jabbing at the bear with a stick when it released its grip on Annalyn to swat Kelly. As the bear spun back toward Annalyn, it clamped its jaws onto Leah Set's wrist and jerked her back and forth violently. Now feeling compelled into the fight, Wendell charged in with her own stick and struck the bear. She also threw Leoset's cell phone at it, in desperation. Leoset did something irrational and desperate, something I've never heard of anyone doing to save the life of their friend. She threw herself across Annalyn's body and wrapped her arms around her friend to shield her from the bear. Leoset's actions turned the two women into a ball of legs and arms. Given their vulnerable areas were facing each other, Leoset's decision to throw herself over her friend created a predatory dilemma for the bear. It bit into one of the most accessible parts it could get to, which was Annalyn's arm, and dragged the women further into the bushes together. Kelly and Wendelie continued to yell and throw things at the bear as it dragged Annalyn and Leoset away from the trail. Both women began to wave the younger hikers off, instructing them to go get help. Kelly and Wendell decided finding someone to shoot the bear was their best chance and headed toward a ski cabin. They dialed 911 on their cell phones and sheltered inside the cabin until authorities could arrive. While at the mercy of the black bear, Leah Set was bitten on her arms, scalp, hips, and neck as she curled into a ball trying to protect herself. She prayed and rebuked the bear's attack and the pain it brought in Jesus' name. After her prayer, the black bear bit onto the back of her neck and tossed her back and forth, trying to break her neck and end her life. After an hour, the RCMP and a few community volunteers arrived and began searching for the women. For the past hour, the bear had sat atop of Anna Lynn and alternated between chewing on the women's arms to pull them apart and apparently waiting for them to die. As the search team neared their location in the dark, the women shook the bushes around them and whispered pleas for help, afraid to rouse the bear to a renewed attack. Staff Sergeant Damon Werrell peered through the darkness and searched the brush, lit by his flashlight. He suddenly heard a faint voice say, Help, bear, to his left, and pointed his flashlight to illuminate the women. He could see they were drenched in blood, and their arms were mangled and tattered. A shadow shifted amongst the bushes, and Sergeant Worrell could make out the shape of the bear only a few yards from the women. He knew that the presence of the bear indicated that it was intending to eat the women, and it was determined to defend what it recognized as its food. Sergeant Worrell took quick aim and fired at the bear, and the bear disappeared from view in the darkness. It wasn't heard scampering through the brush, so the officers knew that it was likely where they had last seen it. Having no idea where the bear was located, they pushed their way toward Annalyn and Leah Set to help them. 
After getting the women to the paramedics, they were flown by medical helicopters to hospitals that could handle their injuries. Anna Lynn was flown to a Vancouver hospital and was listed in stable but serious condition. The staff gave her a 50% chance of losing her left arm, given she had a high risk of developing an infection in it. The bear had severed her radial nerve in her shoulder, which could cause loss of function. She also suffered injuries to her thigh from the bear's teeth. Leosette was flown to Edmonton Royal Alexandra Hospital, where she was initially given a 50% chance of survival due to the seriousness of her injuries from the attack. She received stitches in her arms, scalp, and pins in her hands to hold her fingers straight until they could heal. Both women faced a very long road to recovery following the bear attack that nearly claimed their lives. For months following the attack, Leah Sett would wake up and pray that God would take away the memories and nightmares. Following the report of the attack on the hikers, Dawson Creek rallied to raise funds to offset their medical expenses. Local business owners and community members organized events that helped the women pay their expensive medical bills and demonstrated just how loved they are. As for the bear, the Mounties did kill it when they fired at it in the bushes. A necropsy was completed and no other details were reported about it other than it was a large male and that its actions were recognized as strictly predatory in nature. Nothing regarding its health, age, or condition was made available. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I'm left with a few questions for you. Have you ever visited a hiking trail near the edge of town and seen a black bear? Would you expect to see one in a location such as the Bear Mountain Ski Hill? Do you find it concerning that the bear attacked a group of four people? The next time you go out for fall pictures, will you be careful to look around to make sure there's no big black bears sneaking up on you? I'm pretty sure I will. I'll be glad to read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comments section below, and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below, so check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.